The LG QNED 99 is one phenomenal TV. It is LG's flagship LCD TV and it is magnificent. In this video I'm going to tell you all about it, explain how it works and go over the pros and cons. So without further ado, let's take a look. So I've been lucky enough to use and test this TV and holy crap what a great piece of kit. This is the 75 inch model and Blimey. But firstly, what is QNED? Well, the QNED 99 is a mini LED display. So differing from conventional edge lit and full array LED TVs. I mean, it is basically a full array LED TV with just a lot more and a lot smaller LEDs. This is designed to significantly reduce light bleeding and blooming with enhanced local dimming. In theory, giving you OLED level blacks and contrast without the risk of burning. And does it achieve this? Well, no, but it is pretty close. But before we go into a bit more detail on the picture, let's get a bit more practical. The design of this model is great. Well, the 75 inch does have the option of giving you a gallery mount, which does make your TV have a flush finish against the wall. Whereas that mount does cost 70 quid, so you can just use a Visa mount if you would prefer to do that. Now, despite being an LCD TV, this TV only has a thickness of about four centimeters, which is crazy thin considering it has all of the lighting array in the back. Now that doesn't stop this thing being ridiculously heavy. So I would recommend when you do set it up that you do get someone to help you with it, to help you lift it, carry it, and especially if you're going to be wall mounting it. Pivot! The QNED also does come with this stand. And the stand is massive. So be aware that if you're not going to be wall mounting it, you do need to have a unit that's going to be big enough to keep this thing on it. The TV does have a metal surround that adds slightly to the bezel, but the bezel is still only about eight millimeters. So it's not really going to affect it that much. And actually, I think it just frames the TV quite nicely. And ultimately, like most TVs nowadays, you're basically just looking at a black rectangle on the wall. So there's not much more in terms of the design to go over. You can tell LG have been quite generous with the anti-reflective material on this thing. So it will be interesting to see how that plays up later in the video. All the ports on this are recessed into the TV. And that is because in order to have the gallery mount, you need to not have lots of space behind it because it's going to be flush. That does mean you're not having to sacrifice not being able to use those back ports in order to wall mount it, which is a positive. That being said, it is going to be a huge pain to get to any of these points once it has been wall mounted. So if you are going to be wall mounting it, do bear that in mind. The easiest ports to access are on the side. Those are two of the four HDMI ports, including the eARC port and the common interface port and one of the USB 2.0 ports. The other HDMI's, aerial satellite, optical out, that's all on the bottom. So this being an 8K TV, means that it has four HDMI 2.1 ports. So that means it can do 8K at 60 Hertz. And for you gamers out there, it means you can also get 4K at 120 Hertz. Now the QNED 99 does have the same remote as the other LGs that have been released this year. And it works exactly the same. You got your shortcuts for the favorite channels and this cool Wii remote feature. It isn't the nicest looking remote, but it certainly does work well. You can also set your favorite apps to the remote by linking them with the numerical buttons. And that's the same with the other LG OLEDs this year, which I didn't mention in my other videos. Thank you comment section. And like the other LG TVs, this does run webOS and it runs it okay. Despite having a lot of the same innards and the same processor as the LG C1, I did find webOS didn't run as smoothly on this. And I'm assuming because the main job of the processor is to help provide that 8K picture and do all the upscaling and motion smoothing. But it did seem when going through the menus, it was a bit slow and a bit choppy. Now webOS is okay. It's certainly not my favorite TV operating system. At the risk of being very crowded, everything is accessible and you can sort of get to everything with only a couple of clicks but it is definitely too busy in my opinion everything is there but you get lost looking for it webos does bring support for amazon alexa google home apple home it also has support for screen sharing like with airplay 2 for example so functionality wise this thing is definitely up there but enough of the waffle what is the picture like on this thing well the picture on this tv is great. With the clarity of 8K, it really does blow your mind. It even upscales content lower than 8K up, so even that looks amazing. And obviously, to some degree, you get out what you put in. If you put rubbish content in, it's not going to come out and look as good as if you had just put decent content in in the first place. You can put makeup on a pig, but it's still a pig. <laughs> 
It's not like in crime dramas where you can just enhance and enhance and enhance. Can you enhance the image from here? Can you enhance him right here? Can you enhance it? Can you enhance it? Can we enhance this? Can you enhance it? Hold on a second, I'll enhance it. Now, like I said earlier, the picture is phenomenal. Two of the positives being from the wide color gamut that you get from having a mixture of nano cell technology and quantum dot technology. And then having the mini LEDs makes this happen with a very bright image. That being with the best local dimming you can find now on an LG LCD display. Firstly, this TV can display more colours, so any HDR content that you're watching is going to be closer to a lifelike image. Now with the mini LEDs, we do have better local dimming and better contrasts with a higher brightness than an OLED. Now I'm going to get into some of the things that aren't necessarily perfect about this, and I just want to make sure that in order to see how amazing this thing does look, you have to see it close up. It's not perfect, but it still will blow your mind every time you switch it on. Now the blacks are very good, but actually the contrast just isn't quite there. While blooming is definitely reduced on the QNED, it is still there and it is noticeable. And unfortunately for LCD panels, they can suffer badly from something called dirty screen effect. Now this does vary from model to model, so there is a good chance you'll get one and it will be perfect, and there's a chance that you get one and it will be not perfect. Now this model that I've got my hands on, you can see here that the screen uniformity is struggling. No, it's not a major issue in most scenes, but if you're watching sports like football where a large portion of the display is green and it's panning from one side to the other, it is going to be very noticeable. The TV does have support for HDR10 Pro, Dolby Vision and all that, and HDR content will be decent on this TV because the TV can be so bright. The only issue comes in dark scenes, where the TV is trying to mimic the dark blacks of an OLED, there is a cutoff where it can get a bit mixed up. You might lose some of the clarity if your local dimming settings are switched in a certain way. Basically, there's a slight risk of colours near black getting lost. It does support full 8K, and it does handle the 8K picture without any imperfections. Motion is also handled very well on the QNN 99, with the option to turn on Motion Pro for things like motion smoothing, etc. Now, this TV is 120Hz up to 4K, but this TV doesn't support VR. So the TV isn't optimised for gaming. Don't get me wrong, it's still going to play great with a 120Hz refresh rate. The input lag is only 6 milliseconds, which is very, very good. Not quite as good as an OLED, but still definitely up there. And like a lot of the other LGs released this year, this does have the game optimizer mode on WebOS. The sound on this TV is pretty good. It's a 4.2 channel system, which means it's got 4 speakers and 2 subs all down firing. This can give you a fairly decent sound, but I would definitely recommend pairing it up with at least a soundbar or a full sound system. The TV does support Dolby Atmos and it can pass that through for the enhanced audio channel HDMI that is on the back. Unfortunately, there's no support for DTS or DTS-X. Now you can get 5.1 Dolby Digital out of the audio out or the HDMI if you don't have a sound system compatible with EARC. So who should be buying this TV? Well, there are a few pros and cons. Now, for anyone who wants decent blacks without having to risk burning, this is definitely going to be a good compromise from an OLED. It certainly isn't the same as OLED, and we might have to wait a few years for micro LED to become a more popular thing before we can achieve that. But this is certainly not bad. Functionality on the QNET 99 is great. And WebOS has tons of features like Amazon Alexa support and AirPlay 2. This thing is bright. For anyone having a TV in a bright room full of windows or lights, this is definitely going to be a good option for you. Viewing angles are very good, and because of the reflective material on it, and the fact it can be quite bright, it does handle reflections very well. Sport will be okay on this thing. The TV does handle motion very well, and it will deliver a very sharp and clear picture, but there is that risk of the dirty screen effect that might be a bit off-putting for you. Gaming again is great, but it's not perfect. The low input lag and the 4K at 120Hz, mwah, they are great pros. However, the QNET 99 doesn't support VRR, which means no G-Sync, no FreeSync. So for gaming, unfortunately, this isn't going to be as good as the LG C1, or even the QNED below this, the QNED 90. Obviously, this is an 8K display, and it does handle 8K very well. The only issue with 8K, really, is the limited 8K content that is out there. Now, if you really do want 8K, 
you are going to have to make some sacrifices that are in the gaming department, but it is going to give you that wow factor that you might not get from a 4K. This is a wow TV. Ultimately, I have gone into detail on some of the things that you need to watch out for, but this is a very, very good TV. And until you sit down in front of it and see it for yourself, you're not going to be able to have that experience. This TV is going to be amazing for events or for a group of large people to watch, and this TV will make your jaw drop when you watch it. It's just not perfect. And I guess that is my verdict. The LG QNED 99, amazing, outstanding, but not quite perfect. Click this video here to see my review of the LG C1 OLED, or click this video here to watch another video that I've done that YouTube thinks you'll like. Whoop!